So we just had the Nintendo Direct a few days ago, and while there are some mixed opinions based on the games that were shown there, I think a lot of people can agree the Nintendo Direct itself as a presentation is a great way to communicate new releases, games, all of this coming up in the, the near term, and then even some way off in the future, like uh, Breath of the Wild 2 or, or uh, Metroid Prime 4, or anything like that. But Nintendo does a very good job setting up, say, 2022 as it is now throughout the summer into even September with Xenoblade Chronicles 3. But there was an article that was posted up over on Windows Central kind of reflecting on Microsoft's current strategy when it comes to communication, even their year right now for 2022, which is looking up... Uh, a bit uh, barren right now, but we're going to go over that and how Microsoft could benefit heavily from their own Nintendo Direct format. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Small Wave Plus channel, make sure you subscribe down below. Let's head over here real quick. This was posted up on Windows Central. They say Xbox needs an answer to the Nintendo Direct. I don't really see it as an answer necessarily, more or less just taking some cues from Nintendo and what they've been able to create from many, many years of uh, brand awareness, marketing, advertising, all this for the Direct. This isn't something that just necessarily happened overnight. It's been building for a while. Nintendo, of course, with E3, had some struggles with some of those live presentations. They decided, you know what, let's just create a way to directly deliver this information to, uh, to gamers or people who own our systems or all of this. And it be a much snappier presentation rather than maybe a two-hour live stage presentation that typically has a lot of filler that accompanies that. Well, Nintendo, I think, as we can all tell, uh, really came, came up with something there with that Direct. Microsoft is now in a position where they have a ton of developers and studios, much more so than they did during the 360 days or the beginning of the Xbox One days. And with this deal for Activision Blizzard set to go through by mid-2023, they could potentially have a run where every other month even... They could have a game ready to go from their own studios. That's not to mention any third parties that they may sign for different deals with Game Pass, like we've seen in the past there. But in 2022, to kind of start things off, there's not a lot going on. They just released Crossfire X. Well, Microsoft didn't necessarily release it, but uh, it went out on the Game Pass. I think Smilegate did the multiplayer and Remedy did the single player and the game isn't very good. <laughs> if you play the multiplayer, it's uh, there, there's much better experiences out there, especially with something like Halo on, on the same platform, even Call of Duty. But at this time, after that's released, you look kind of on Microsoft's calendar, and we have like Redfall coming up in the summer. Stalker 2 got pushed to the end of the year, which is where Starfield is. So yeah, you kind of look around. Shredders, I think that that's coming up, right? It's a snowboarding game. Looks pretty cool. But like, there's no big hitters necessarily from Microsoft's first-party studios where we can just say, yep, it's coming out in the next two or three months. If you looked at what Nintendo did with their Direct, they outlined the next, like, three, four, five months. I mean, the latest game that we've really found out about in that Direct was Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and that's out in September. Everything else was coming out in, like, the next couple of months, which is great, obviously, because you see a game for the first time, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's, like, three or four months away. That's amazing. That's much better than having to wait years potentially for a game to come out. And Nintendo does a very good job of showing gameplay. I think everything that was shown there, it wasn't just like a cinematic trailer. It started out maybe as that, but then it went into gameplay. And they even spent some time showing off features like with Mario Strikers or even Kirby, which they're doing a massive marketing campaign behind as it is. So you bring in Microsoft with all of these studios that they have acquired. I mean, looking back to where they were to start Xbox One's generation to where they are now to start the Xbox Series generation, much different. They could get to a point where they potentially have games coming out constantly throughout a year, and they could benefit from, as is stated here in the Windows Central article, maybe one show every quarter. My only concern with that is one of the reasons the Nintendo Direct itself is able to build so much hype is it's not that frequent. I mean, technically, we get we expect, I should say, three a year. I say expect because we had that one run where it was like an entire year that... No real direct happened. We had like minis and indie worlds, but 
there were a lot of things going on in the background with the pandemic, remote work, all these different things. I think just threw everything into flux at that time. But typically, Nintendo will have three ready. And to be honest, one of them will go along with E3 typically. And we don't know what's going on with E3. So, I mean, that could just be whenever Nintendo feels like it over the summer. Maybe we get like a, a July direct even or end of June. So... I think the idea of Microsoft doing one every single quarter isn't the best idea. In fact, if I was Microsoft, I would do one or two really big shows per year and then sprinkle in some smaller shows. Like they could have an entire show where everything you see is on Game Pass. Like they could even title it or brand it around that service. So you can tune in if you already have Game Pass. You're just going to see a bunch of games that you're just going to download. You don't necessarily have to buy up front like you would for maybe some third-party deals that they sign on the marketing deal with one of these uh, these companies, these developers, and they're going to showcase it for the first time in, in one of these presentations, right? That they could save for a really big Xbox Direct and then save uh, smaller shows like Nintendo does with minis or Indie World showcases for other times between. Now, I know Microsoft has tried this before. They did Inside Xbox, and that was a problem because they tried to do it way too much. And that's what I said. You have to spend some time off so you can build that anticipation and that hype. Like, when a Direct is 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 announced, you know Nintendo's bringing it full force. Whereas, with some of those Inside Xboxes, it just seemed like they didn't have anything to show. So, they felt the need to fill up two hours for... No reason at all. It felt like the Direct was 40 minutes, and it was game after game after game. You didn't have someone, like, kind of just talk or present in between every single game. It just went from one to the other, and then occasionally you would have uh, Takahashi, like, ask you, how the direct, how's the Direct going? Here's some more games from our third-party partners, or, or this is our last showing. Stuff like that. He didn't sit there on screen for 10 15 minutes maybe talking up one specific game outside of, I guess, Switch Sports. But, I mean, technically they at least played it. Obviously, that's something they're trying to push, though. It's mirroring Wii Sports, and we saw how that worked out for the Wii. But for the most part, it's quick, and it's to the point. It's direct. And, you know, as much as I like E3, I don't think it'd be a big deal if it did eventually go away. And, really, these direct presentations from each company, Sony has state of play in their PlayStation experience, Nintendo with their directs and their minis, and then maybe Xbox comes up with something they can brand and, and market a bit better than what they did with Inside Xbox. And we just look forward to these presentations two or three times per year from each company because if you think about it that way, yeah, I mean, you would probably have something big to look forward to every other month just about but let me know what you guys think about this should we get to a point where microsoft has their own direct presentation as they have over 30 studios or something now and you figure they'll get to a point where they have enough games to release something every other month so they probably have a lot to talk about thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time